There are a ton of mounts for you to farm for and collect within World of Warcraft scattered across all the different continents in the game. So in this video series I wanted to pick a continent at a time and run through all the different zones that give you a potential amount, whether it's a daily quest or a raid or a rare spawn, basically just mounts that you can work towards and try and get. In this video we're going to be focused on Kalimdor and our first stop, if you're Alliance at least, is going to be Winterspring. The mount the Alliance can get from this zone is the Winterspring Frost Saber and to get started with this you'll want to head to the north side of the zone here you'll find Frost Saber Rock, and on top of said rock you'll find an NPC called Ravern Frostwind. They'll have a quest for you which will eventually turn into a dealer. You'll have to do 20 days of dailies, and on the last day you'll be awarded with the Winter Spring Frost Saber. Our next destination is going to be Darkshore, and there will be mounts available here for both Horde and Alliance. First of all, we're going to be talking about the four rare spawns, which can be killed once per cycle. A cycle is basically when the Warfront goes from being in the patrolling state into the sieging state, etc., and then all the way back to the patrolling state again. When that happens, the rares will be once again eligible to be killed. These four rares that I'm going to mention have around a 5% chance of dropping the mounts each. The first mount up is going to be the Ashen Veil Chimera, and this is going to drop from Alash Anir, which is killable by both Horde and Alliance. The next mount up is Black Paw, and for Horde, you'll need to kill the Black Paw rare. For Alliance, you'll need to kill a Geth Wormwood, which both spawn in around the same spot. The next mount up is the Kaldorai Night Saber, and for Horde, you'll need to kill Shadow Claw, and for Alliance, you'll need to kill Cross Blood Rage. And finally, we have the Umber Night Saber, which for Horde, you'll need to kill a Phil Dufire, and for Alliance, you'll need to kill Moxo the Beheader. There is an additional mount you can get from Darkshaw, and that is the Frightened Kodo, but you won't kill the Frightened Kodo, instead, you'll find it and click on it, and you will get the mount 100% guaranteed. The difficult part though is the Frightened Kodo is on a 2-8 to eight hour ish respawn timer and when it does respawn it's only around for a minute or so so you need to be actively looking for it to be able to find it. It has 5 spawn locations which I'll mark now and I would recommend creating a macro to target the Frightened Kodo and spam that as you're flying around just to make it a little bit easier to find it. When it does spawn, it'll kind of run backwards and forwards in one of its spawn locations. You'll find it, you'll click on it, and you will get yourself the mount. The next stop is High Jal, and the first place there is going to be the Firelands. You can run this on 10 man, 25 man, normal, heroic, it doesn't matter. But the two bosses in particular that we're interested in is Alice Razor for the Flame Talon of Alice Razor, which is on around a 2% drop chance. And then also Ragnaros for the Pure Blood Firehawk, which is on around a 1% drop chance. As this is a rage, you'll only be able to do this once per week per character, but you can run this on your alts as well if you want to. Although with Firelands done, we're not quite done in High Jal yet. The next mount up is the Flame Ward Hippogriff, which is going to come from completing dailies at the Molten Front. To get started with the Molten Front, you'll have needed to have aided the four Guardians within the zone. Once all four Guardians have been aided, then you'll be able to speak to Mato Claw, who you'll find in the Sanctuary of Malorn. That'll give you the quest opening the door. You'll go through that quest chain and you'll begin to unlock the dailies. You'll come back and do all of the dailies every day, and you'll have to do this for about a month. Once you're done with all of that, you'll get the achievement, which will award you with the Flame Ward Hippogriff. The next stop on our Kalimdor tour is going to be Orgrimmar, and this is obviously for Horde only. Here we're going to find access to two things, the first thing being Deepholm, and within Deepholm you'll find the Dungeon Stone Core. From the second boss within Stone Core, you can do this on Normal or Heroic, you'll find the Mount, the Vitreous Stone Drake. That's on about a 1% drop chance, and you can repeat this over and over again if you want to on Normal, until you get locked out, of course. Or you could do it once a day on Heroic, the drop chances are exactly the same. Also within the zone of Deep Holm, you'll find the rare spawn Aeonax, although Aeonax is actually a rare spawn of a rare spawn, so you could be waiting a day to find it, you could be waiting three days, you could be waiting a week, it's a, a quite RNG heavy respawn timer. But when Aeonax does spawn, you'll kill it and you'll get yourself the Phosphorescent Stone Drake, which will be on a 100% drop chance. The hard part is just finding Aeonax. So now that we're done with Deep Holm, we're going to head back through the portal and back to Orgrimmar, and if the Dark Moon Fair is up, it comes up at the start of a new month for about a week. We can speak to an NPC in Orgrimmar who will take us to the Dark Moon Island portal located in Mulgore. You'll click on that portal and that will take you to the Dark Moon Island. Once there, there'll be three different mounts we can get from the Dark Moon price tickets. 
and you get Dark Moon prize tickets from handing in the quest items, which you get from the Adventurer's Guide. This can be done once per cycle, so every month basically. You can be farming these from various sources using the Adventurer's Guide, having it in your inventory, but I generally buy them from the auction house, they don't cost that much. You can also be doing the daily quests at the Dark Moon Fair Island, which will also give you Dark Moon prize tickets. And with the tickets, we'll be able to buy three mounts, the first being the Swift Forest Strider. This is going to cost 180 tickets. The second being the Dark Moon Dancing Bear, that's also going to cost 180 tickets. And then finally we have the Dark Moon Dirigible, which is going to cost 1000 tickets. So that's going to be the one that you're going to be working towards the most. Also while you're here you could do a spot of fishing, and you'll be able to get the Dark Moon Dagamores, which can either be used to turn in for another mount, which is the Dark Moon Fair Skate, or alternatively you can buy the Dagamores from the auction house. There's also a quest item that you can buy once per character that will give you a decent chunk of tickets too. So if you haven't done that, I definitely would recommend doing it. I think it gives like 200 tickets, so it's definitely doing the first time round if you haven't done it. Our next stop is going to be Dustwallow Marsh, regardless of if you're Horde or Alliance. And there we'll find the Raid Onyxia's Lair. From that we can get the Drake, the Onyxian Drake. So you want to head inside the raid and kill Anixia. It doesn't matter if you do this on 10 man or 25 man, it's not going to change anything. Kill Anixia and you'll have around a 1% chance of the Anixian Drake dropping. With Anixia killed, our next stop is going to be Horde Onla and that is going to be Ungoro Crater. From Ungoro Crater we're going to be able to get the Venom Hide Ravisaur. So you'll head to Ungoro and in the southeast part of the zone you'll find an NPC called Morvac. They'll have a quest for you, which is quite an annoying quest chain, but once you get through it with a bit of struggle and time, then you'll be on a set of dailies, and you'll have to do 20 days of dailies. Once you're done with all of that, then you'll be able to pick yourself up the Venom Hide Ravisaur. Coming to the end of our Kalimdor World Tour now, we only have a few zones left, and the next one up is going to be Silithus. In the south end of this zone, you'll find a raid called AQ Forta, or also known as Temple of Anchorage. And if you head inside that raid, we're going to be able to get one of four mounts, or you can get all four at once as well. And that is going to be the blue, green, yellow, and red Karaji Resonating Crystal. Now the downside is these mounts can only be used within this raid, but they do count towards your total mount collection, so they're worth getting if you don't have them already. You have two options for getting these mounts. You can either kill out all of the trash before the first boss and keep resetting until you get the mounts. The red one being significantly rarer than the other three. So you could kill out the trash over and over again without killing the first boss and keep resetting. Or you could clear out the whole raid and hope you get all of the mounts that you want. If not, you'd have to come back when it resets. Down to the final two zones now, and the next one up is going to be Ulden, which has a handful of mounts we can get from it. The first one up being the Grey Riding Camel, which is quite difficult to get because it's kind of like a rare spawn and then a proc of that rare spawn. It's, it's, it's weird. But throughout the zone, you'll find this item called Mysterious Camel Figurine. It can spawn pretty much anywhere across the zone. It does have set positions, but it does spawn all around the zone. If you find one of these, there can only be one up at a time and it does have about a two to eight hour respawn. If you happen to find one, you'll click it. And when you click it, you'll have about a five to 10% chance of it either turning into dust or teleporting you to a separate phased area where you'll have a rare spawn that you can kill. And when you kill that rare spawn, you'll get yourself the title and the gray riding camel. So once again, a kind of rare spawn of a rare spawn type deal. And you're probably going to be after going after this for quite a while. And the statues are really small, so you have to really be paying attention and looking out for them. The next stop within Uldum is going to be Throne of the Four Winds. And from this raid, we can potentially get the Drake of the South Wind. So you'll find Throne of the Four Winds kind of southwest of the zone. And it is in the air as well, so you will need to fly to it. It is a raid, so we can only do this once per week per character. So you'll head inside, and it's the last boss that we're after, Alakir. You'll kill Alakir and you'll have around a 1% chance of getting the mount. The final stop within Uldum is going to be Vortex Pinnacle, which we'll find more southeast of the zone, and this is a dungeon that can give us Drake of the North Wind. So you'll head over to Vortex Pinnacle, which once again is in the air. You'll head inside and you can do this on either normal or heroic, but it is a farmable mount if you do it on normal, so you could do it over and over again. You're going to run through the dungeon and we want to kill the second boss in the dungeon, Alteris. You'll kill Alteris, you'll have around a 1% chance of getting Drake of the North Wind. If you don't get it, I would recommend just jumping off, and that'll take you to the start of the dungeon where you can reset a little bit quicker, you know? Don't worry, you're not jumping off in disappointment. 
and then that's pretty much it. You can rinse and repeat this raid over and over again if you want to, or you could just run it on Heroic once per day if you want to, but the drop chance doesn't change, so it's really up to you how you want to approach farm in this mount. The final zone in our Kalimdor tour is going to be Tanaris, and there's actually quite a few mounts we can potentially get from this zone as well, all of which are going to come from the Caverns of Time, which you'll find kind of on the east side of the zone. So you'll want to head to the Caverns of Time and you'll head into the center of the Caverns of Time area. Here we'll find a bunch of dungeons and raids, but there'll be two in particular that are of interest to us. The first being the Dungeon Cullen of Stratholm. From this we can get the Bronze Drake on a 100% drop chance. So you'll head in there, you'll be making sure you're on Heroic Difficulty, and you'll clear through the dungeon. As a 120 you should be able to do this in plenty of time, but you'll essentially have a timer on the top of your screen. And you have to make it towards the last boss, not kill the last boss, but just get into the last boss's area. And before you make it into the last boss's room, if you take a left, you'll find an infinite dragon, which will be kind of like a mini boss. You'll kill that mini boss and you'll be awarded with the bronze drake on a 100% drop chance, assuming you've done everything in time. So with the Cullen of Stratholm done, the next point of interest in the Caverns of Time is going to be Dragon Soul. This is a raid, so you can only do it once per week, and there's going to be three mounts we can potentially get from here. The first being from the fourth boss, Ultraxium, which is going to be Experiment 12B. That's going to be on around a 1% drop chance. So you'll head in there, you'll kill Ultraxion, and you'll have around a 1% chance of this mount dropping. Now I would recommend doing Dragon Soul on Heroic, as doing on Heroic will give you a chance for the third mount. If you do it on Normal, you're only going to be able to get potentially two mounts instead of three. So if you go through the whole raid, you make your way to Madness of Deathwing. Then from Madness of Deathwing 10 men, you'll be able to get the Blazing Drake, which I think is on about a 2%-ish drop chance. And if you do this on Heroic, doing Madness of Deathwing, you're going to be able to get the Blazing Drake again, but also the Life Binders Handmaiden, which is a heroic only drop. That's on about a 1% drop chance. I do believe the Blazing Drake has a slightly higher drop chance than the Life Binders, but I might be slightly wrong with that because data is skewed. But either way, keep coming into the raid and killing off Ultraxion and then Madness of Deathwing to try and get all of the three rare drops from this raid. So that does bring us to the end of our Callum Dol World Tour, but I will be covering the other continents and the mounts that you can get from the various zones within those continents in videos coming up very soon. So look out for those if you found this a little bit of fun and interesting. Either way, look out for more videos coming soon. Thanks for watching guys. See ya.